So this week I finally got around to tiling a splashback area in my utility kitchen. So if you want to see how I do it, then keep on watching. Good man. Oh, good boy. There, everyone's seen you now. <laughs> So the first thing I had to do was patch up this old doorway, which is now a window. But I've decided to save this bit for the next video because it's highly unlikely someone needs this as part of their tiling project. So I'm fast forwarding to where it's all skimmed. And it's generally a good idea to patch any uneven surfaces anyway, so you can start tiling straight away on a roughly level surface. And now I'm coating the painted wall and the wooden section with a PVA solution. I know some people think this is a bad idea, but the adhesive that I used was amazing and they're not going anywhere. I was originally going to tile this high as well, but I later decided I liked three rows instead. Now I think the most important part of this project is planning where your tile is going to start and finish. And I'll leave an in-depth blog post below if you want a bit of a helping hand, but you need to make sure you're not going to be left with any daft tiny pieces that you can't work with around windowsills, the windows, electric sockets, and the end of a kitchen worktop, which you'll see shortly. So make sure you test with two rows rather than just the one, particularly if you're doing a running bond, which is a brick laying effect. But it was particularly important to me to get the tiles dead centre of my little focal point, which is this sink. So I'm measuring and marking it out, and it's a good idea to cover the worktops as well. Trust me, the tile adhesive gets everywhere. So this time I'm using this Mapite tile adhesive, and I'm starting in the middle, and I'm applying it with an adhesive trowel, which has got loads of notches at the end. Don't worry, I'll leave links to everything that I'm using below. And I'm only adding enough at a time to work with. And because my worktop has a joint corner strip, I wanted to add some spaces along the bottom to allow for that. So I'm sticking on my first tile, pushing it firmly, making sure that pencil line is just at the side of it. By the way, the spaces I'm using here are two mil. Then I'd place the other one next to it, making sure the spaces are along the bottom and between each tile. The other thing that I particularly like about these is you can snap one of the arms off the spaces to create a T-bar, a bit like a Tetris piece, and then stick it along the top or the bottom between the tiles. Now, I did all of this project on my own, but one thing that I would recommend is having a spare pair of hands to clean up any adhesive on the tiles as you go and in between the gaps if possible. Plus it can be risky chipping your tiles as well trying to remove it. So I just kept going on my first main row and then occasionally I'd make sure everything was level. The other issue that I had was the wall wasn't totally flat because this wooden area stuck out a little bit and to work around it I just built it up with a bit more adhesive. But because I'm going to be adding a trim around this, I purposely didn't cut my last piece until I was ready. So instead, I'd go back to the centre and just got the majority of the work done. And I suppose with any kitchen, you've got to work with what you've got. And this windowsill was one of those examples because it doesn't stick out enough for my liking. So I thought, let's cut the tiles up to the edge and we'll silicon seal over it. Or I build out a lip. And I took it to what I consider a bog standard tile cutter and I start from the bottom, push the lever down and forward to score it on the top. And when I get to the end, I make sure the little pressure plate is at the top, push it down, and it cuts it in half. So that's my first one done. And I had to do this a few times to get the cut that I wanted because it was quite tight on this windowsill. But I really didn't mind a little bit of waste to get the perfect cut because these tiles are six pound a box. And I'm using the classic white metro tile with a beveled edge. The other thing I don't like about this windowsill is whoever's cut it hasn't cut it straight. So to make sure I have my next full tile on, I'm filing it down with a rasp. And this was around the time I thought, actually, I don't need any more than three rows. This is enough. So you can see I have a tower now of tiles because I need to do some planning around my corner trim area. I went for this square box trim. And now I'm cutting a mitered corner using a mitre box and a trim hacksaw, which will be the frame around my splashback. And I found a 10 mil trim was better than an eight mil, even though my tile was eight mil thick. Once I cut my first one down, I gently sanded it with fine sandpaper, but you'll notice I've also jammed a piece of wood at the bottom, of, and this was just to help it last. So I've got my first cut, I then used another piece to overlay it so I could draw where the other mitered cut needed to be and then cut in the opposite direction. So my mitered cut will frame around my tiles just like this. I think this is pretty neat. But the trickiest part of this job was working out where to cut the depth of my trim. And because I only had three rows, I found this blue tack hack the perfect job. But obviously you've got to be careful in case they fall off or you could lay a pattern on the floor 
with some spaces and measure it that way instead. And this is also when I realized, oh, by having my towel centre for the sink, it meant I couldn't have my splashback right to the very end. But for the sake of eight mil, I think it'll just blend in by the time I've put silicon around it. So I'm temporarily blue tacking just this small section here so I can make sure I get the trim exactly right. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't do this if I um, had my husband here, I'd get him to hold things, but it's just quite tricky. And I know that if I cut it too short, it's gonna really annoy me. So may as well take the time. If you've got any other recommendations what you do, please let me know. But somebody suggested a glue gun in a tile store and I really didn't like that idea. Thought it'd be a nightmare to get off. It's actually a 9.6 if that was the... So now I've done my dummy run, I dismantled them all made sure I removed the blue tack and then continued building it up with the tile adhesive and also trapping the trim behind it as well. And the same went for the top piece. But something that was really bugging me was even though my mitered cut was perfect, they weren't meeting together. I tried holding it into place with my fingers and I couldn't stay like that forever. So I used this Bostic Fix and Flash glue that is like a resin, it cures with the UV light and it clamped it together within seconds. Okay, on to the next side. This is the part I was dreading because I have not used my wet towel saw in over two years and I wasn't even sure it would work still. But I had to make a cut around this upstand and I used a set square to mark out where it stopped. And to work out the profiled edge, thankfully I had an off cut of the upstand so I could hold it against it and draw around it. Yeah. On. Bad. It needs more on that side off. And once I'd made that cut, I was able to stick it to the wall and continue up to the window. And I also added trim on this side as well. Oh, what a dream! So after leaving that for a day to set, it was time to get ready for the grouting. So I removed all of the tile spaces, although some can get stuck. And then the most tedious part is scouring all of the tile adhesive off. It's so boring. I also removed the plastic sheet as well because there were a lot of mess on there too. Okay, so it's grouting time. Yes, I'm wearing goggles because there is a bit of cement in the grout. In fact, the first and only time I've ever tiled a kitchen, I'll leave the video link below, I didn't wear gloves because nobody wore them in YouTube videos that were following and I burnt some of the tips of my fingers and they were sore for about a week or two right in the nerve ending so I'm wearing rubber gloves and goggles. I don't have a mask on because it's a well ventilated area, I've got a window open there, double doors open here. And in a clean bucket I'm mixing 300ml of cold water with one kilogram of silver grey grout. And once all the grout was added to the water and thoroughly mixed, I only had about 30 minutes to work with this before it set. So avoid mixing more than what you're going to use. And I prefer using a hard rubber squeegee and even more so for a smaller job like this. And I'd angle it in a 45 degree angle, pressing it firmly in the cracks and making sure I don't remove any as I go either. Also, if you remember that cut that I made with the wet towel saw, I purposely didn't grout around that bit because I didn't want the cut to stand out. Now, on the back of my instructions, it says leave it on for 15 minutes. And once I finish adding grout to the last bit, I found it was perfect timing to go back to the other end to remove the excess with a wet grouting sponge. And I always go against the cracks, not with them, so I don't remove more than I should. Otherwise, you're gonna find you need to top it up again. And then after leaving it for a few hours, I returned back to it with a clean microfiber cloth and polished all of the tiles until they were nice and shiny. And then onto the last day, I'm adding white silicon and I'd spray with a washing up liquid solution and remove the excess with a credit card. But I did also put some masking tape along the bottom just to catch any accidents, but I made sure it wasn't too close to the tile because I didn't want it to set over it and ruin my hard work by the time I needed to pull it off. And then finally, which one of my Instagram followers reminded me, is to seal the grout. And I'm actually using a stone sealer and I just brush over it with a paintbrush, leave it to dry, come back to it, remove any excess off the tiles 
and repeat it until I've added a few coats. So I'm so close to being finished and the next job is to plan what colour that I want to paint the walls because we've tried a bit of a grey here, I'm not keen, it's a little bit blue and we've got a aircon unit that's going to be completely gone, changed, so I didn't want to paint the walls yet until I know what I've got to patch up and stuff. But if you do anything differently feel free to comment below. If you like the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching, bye!